call was until 6 o'clock. By which time Carl says that he was back at home. OK, let's keep looking. Anything we can use? No. So you were here all yesterday afternoon, right? Summit, yeah. Till Carl turned up. Carl Henderson? Yeah. And what time was it? I don't know. 3.30, something like that. What do you do then? Do you hang around here for a while? No. It's getting a bit cold. Went back to my place. I got a skateboarding game for Christmas. I can't say lucky go on it. How did you go straight home? Mm. Did your journey take you down Disney Street? Where's that? That's the street with the big CCTV camera at one end. I'm surprised you didn't notice it. This is you, isn't it? Maybe we did walk down there. I don't remember. Maybe you don't remember breaking into a car a couple of streets away. What? No way. All me and Carl did was walk back to my place and play a game. What time do you get back to your place, Grant? You're definitely there by... four. Oh, it's funny. Uh, you remember the time, but you don't remember your route home. Look to the clock, that's all. Of course you did some. Robinson, DS Nixon, DS Turner, we met earlier, do you remember? Well, we're here about the assault, but we're also investigating the fire that happened in the house just across the way there. Can you give us a second? Wouldn't do too much investigating if I were you. Probably left one of the cigarettes burning. Lucky they didn't burn the whole street down. Have you had that checked over, Mr. Robinson? No need for that. Dealt with worse louts than that in my time. Back up, I should do it. Just what I'd expect of that family. Not their biggest fan, then. I'm sorry one of their sons got hurt. These people have only got themselves to blame. The life they live and everything, the, the, the noise they make, the filth they leave lying around. They're no better than animals. Interesting choice of words. But well, you don't have to put up with them. We've checked and we know that you've made several complaints about them. Yes, and a fat lot of good it's done. You lot are useless. Oh, so you decided to take matters into your own hands, did you? What are you saying? Are you accusing me? Because if you are, I can tell you I didn't do it. All right, let's just calm down, Mr. Robinson. Let's just go inside and have a little chat, shall we? The first two candidates were good on paper, but in the flash, they were both non-stars. The third one made it very clear he wanted a more glamorous post than the Borough Station and the Met. Best of the bunch was the fourth one. He was confident, he was articulate, good thief taker, could certainly handle the workload. Well, I couldn't see him working alongside Neil. He's too ambitious and abrasive. Not a good team player. So we're scuppered. We'll have to re-advertise. Well, that depends whether you're prepared to bend the rules a bit. Well, Grant and Carl have obviously rehearsed their stories. I mean, they didn't get all the details right. But I made sure the timing's matched. We got any forensics from the car? Well, the only clear prints are those of the owner. We've got some parcels and some smudges on the steering column and gear stick, but nothing great. So what have we got? CCTV of Grant and Carl, a few streets away from where the car was stolen. The car was abandoned near Grant's house by a kid who might, well, might not be Carl. Dan and Leela were doing door to door. They might get lucky, but that's about it. Right, I'm going to go and have another talk to Carl. You know, I don't think that's going to do any good. Well, I've got to do something. Why were you chucking rubbish into the Henderson's garden? Why not? They're always chucking things into mine. Beer cans, cigarette packets, condoms. Well, why didn't you just report it? Well, no offence, but the police seem to ignore every call I make. So did you decide to get rid of the Henderson's in your own way, then? The fire wasn't an accident. It was started deliberately. Well, it wasn't me. This letter was sent to the Henderson family. Did you put that through their door? So I sent them a letter. I don't suppose they can even read, can they? <laughs> well, in it, you clearly threaten that something will happen to them if they don't move away. You understand it's not the first letter you sent, either. Look, they're just words. Very strong words, Mr. Robinson. They suggest a man at the end of his tether. Shall I tell you what happened when I got home? I sat down and I cried. My wife and I moved here for our retirement years. And even after she died, I never wanted to leave. Till now. So I phoned my daughter and I told her I was going to sell up and uh, move down to Sussex to be nearer to her. You can check with her if you like. I was on the phone a good half hour. I was still talking to her when I heard the fire engines. 
Yes, go. Have you got a minute? Sure. Thanks. How are you getting on with the arson suspect? Um, nothing more than an irate neighbour, really. Um, we've cautioned him for the threatening letters, but that's it. Look, I'd really like you to reconsider applying for the DI's job. Now, I hear what you're saying about having history here. No, you're absolutely right. I shouldn't have let it influence me, but anyway, it's too late now. Missed the application cut off. Well, the superintendent thinks you emailed back a completed application form, but the attachment wouldn't open. So maybe you should resend it. Any progress? I've been trawling through the list of the Henderson's known associates. Now, most of the people we told laughed when they found out about the fire. Yeah, but I think we can eliminate Tommy Henderson from our inquiries. He seemed genuine. I don't think he tortures his own family's house. Well, the forensic report on the fire makes a very interesting reading. It's exactly the same MO as the fires at the B&B and the Foster home. Same point of origin, and white spirit was the accelerant used. I thought we had someone behind bars for it. We have. Warren Pritchard. He's on remand at Beckentree. No, he isn't. I've just checked. He was released on conditional bail just before Christmas. No, no, the Mads refused bail on that. The trial judge didn't. Are oh, you joking? This isn't an isolated fire. It's the third in a series. So what's Warren's motive? I don't know, maybe he likes starting fires. <laughs> no, seriously. He was in the proximity of the B&B at the time of that fire, and he's linked to the foster home, but what is his connection to the Hendersons? Oh, maybe he's just jealous of people with a few quid in their pockets. Hello again, Warren. Dawn said we'd find you here. Yeah, what's up? Well, we're investigating another fire. Last night, Maybury Drive. Oh, come on. That's why you're here. <laughs> so do you mind telling us where you were last night around 7.30? Well, yeah, I don't mind, actually. We need to rule potential suspects in or out, I'm afraid. Oh, come on. You can't keep pointing a finger at me. I mean, this is harassment, isn't it? Please, Warren, just answer the question. Where were you last night around 7.30? And before you answer, bear in mind that your girlfriend already told us that you left the house at 6 and didn't get back until just before 8. OK, I went out for a while. In breach of your bail conditions. Where'd you go? Nowhere near Maybury Drive. Well, that isn't exactly the answer to our question, is it? Yeah, what does it matter? You never believe what I say anyway. All right, here or at the station, Warren. It's up to you. Fair enough. Let's go. I already told the other cop everything I know. And your poxy photo proves nothing. I can't. I haven't come to interrogate you. So what do you want? I've come to give you a chance. You see, my colleagues are convinced that it was you, but I can't quite get my head around that. When I talked to you and Mr Jessup yesterday, all right, I know you were annoyed, but I don't think you hate him enough to deliberately run him over. Of course not. When we spoke yesterday, you said that you'd found it very hard being new at Harvey Wallace. A bit, I suppose. I mean, I know you were saying that to avoid getting punished, but I think there's a bit of truth in that. You have found it tough at school, haven't you? I think you get into trouble because you don't feel you fit in. And now your family's coming to all that money, it must be even worse. I mean, you don't know whether kids really like you or whether they're just using you. No mates. Yeah, I'm sure they are, but it must do your head in. I think you'd probably do anything to impress them. Kyle, I'm giving you a chance to talk to me. That car is being forensically examined. That means fingerprints, cloth fibres, the tiniest speck of DNA. Any one of those can positively identify the driver. It's only a matter of time. So what's he looking at? Is it in one bloke? Well, attempted murder, isn't it? Attempted murder? What if it was an accident? If it was an accident, the driver would have stopped. Unless he was scared. What's going on? No, you can't talk to him without an appropriate adult. Well, you're old enough, you can be the appropriate adult. <laughs> nah, no way. Kid's lucky to be alive, he needs rest. Now get out or I'll call my solicitor. Okay. <coughs> I didn't start a fire last night. I don't even know the Henderson family. Well, then you're one of the very few people in Sun Hill who doesn't, mate. Look, even if I started the other fires, which I didn't, why would I want to start another one? I mean, I've just been given bail. It'd be pretty stupid for me to do so. It's going to put me straight back in jail. Well, maybe you just can't help yourself. Look, there is absolutely nothing that links me with this fire. Warren, the fire was started in exactly the same way as the ones you were charged for. Right down to the white spirit we found on your clothes last time. Well, there's no white spirit on my clothes this time. Well, all that suggests is you've learned from your mistakes. We're still waiting to find out where you were last night. Where I went is my business. You know, you could stop this right now just by giving us a simple, honest answer. See, you never got an alibi when you need one.